Hi, I'm Amanda and I'm from the Circle Integrated Care Rehab team and this video shows the exercises we follow on our back strengthening courses. These exercises aim to increase strength and confidence in muscles and joints, especially if you're suffering with osteoarthritis, poor core stability or other muscle imbalances. This video offers lots of variations to the exercises, so I hope you will find a level that suits you best. Remember to start off with the easy options and slowly increase the level if and when suitable. If you find your back pain is worsened by doing the exercises, then do them for less time and stick to the easier options. However, don't forget that new movement could cause a little bit of discomfort. Rehabilitation of muscle tissues can take up to 12 weeks to show improvement. So don't rush and don't expect too much too soon. It might be a good idea to watch the video through first to see how it works and to gauge the appropriate level for you. I show each exercise for one minute, but you're welcome to adapt this and do more or less as you see fit. All you need to start with is a bit of space, say about two meters square is enough, and a dining room chair to either sit or lean on. Please remember to wear supportive shoes, something like trainers, as this helps to support and cushion your joints. Enjoy the video and I do hope that it's beneficial to you. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, let's get into the warm-up. Feel free to put some motivating music on if you wish in the background. And whilst I'm showing these exercises from a standing position, you can do all of these from a seated position if you feel that's more comfortable for you. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start by turning the head gently from side to side, just to loosen up through the neck. Remember to keep your feet planted into the floor and tummy muscles switched on all the way through the warm up. If you want, you can turn that into a nod of the head. Just be careful lifting the chin up. And then we're going to take this into some shoulder rolls, a few times going backwards. And a few times going forwards. We'll work up through the upper body now. You're going to reach your arms forwards and back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Reach those arms forwards, loosening up fully through the shoulder joint, the chest and the upper back. Moving on down to the waist now, we're going to do what's called a side drop. You're just dropping your fingers towards the knees, allowing a little stretch on the opposite side of the waist. But whatever you do, don't let yourself tip forwards with this one. Just go as far as is comfortable and you can feel a little stretch. Staying with the waist, we're going to twist the upper body now. So take the arms out in front comfortably and just keep the feet planted into the floor. Twist the upper body from one side to the other. Next, we're gonna do a slow march. So gently lift your feet one by one off the floor. Go at your own pace, nice and slow to start with to loosen up through the ankle and the knees. We're just trying to lift the heart rate a little and get the blood pumping around a little faster with this. We're now going to do toe taps. So you're going to tap the toes forwards into the floor with a little pause. As you can see here also, I'm showing you how you can hold on to a chair whilst you do this if that's better for you. And then we'll go into some heel digs. It's the same thing with the chair. If you want to hang on to a chair for a little bit of stability, obviously you're welcome to. With the heel digs, you dig the heel down into the floor, a little pause, lift those toes up, and that'll stretch down the back of the leg. Okay, next we're going to do some high knee marches. You're going to lift your knees only as high as is suitable for you. Watch your balance, and obviously use a chair if you want to. And then if you're able to incorporate hand to opposite knee, Again, only if this is suitable for you. Don't push yourself if this makes you feel unsafe. So let's warm the body up just a little bit. We're going to shake the arms and legs out.
and then you're good to go. We're going to start with the main set now. We'll start with heel raises. You're literally lifting your heels off the floor. Quick little look at what we're doing. And the time is about to start. Here we go for a minute then. Slowly lifting the heels up and down. As you can see, you can rest on the back of a chair if you want to. Or not as you feel is appropriate for you. If you find it gets too much to work both heels at the same time, just showing you here how you can alternate one foot to the other if you want to. And if standing is too much for you, by all means you can sit down, lifting the heels off the floor, pressing your hands into your thighs perhaps to add a little bit of extra resistance. Or you could even take some weights into the hands and pop the hands on the thighs with weights in them. Coming up for five seconds left on this one. And your next move is knee raises. Quite simply, you're lifting your knees. So from a standing position, if you want to, here we go. Time is about to start for one, a one minute. Couple of different variations here, of course. You can use the chair to lean on. Indeed, you can sit on that chair as well, gently lifting the feet up off the floor. You will notice you're using your tummy muscles much more with this one. If you do have hip issues, just be careful with this one. It can aggravate. A harder version of this one is you can put a band around your feet. See how it's wrapped around the laces and underneath the foot there in that extra picture that will add on a fair bit of resistance for you if you wanted to make it a little bit more challenging. Got about 10 more seconds left with the knee raise and our next exercise is pelvic tilts. So you might need a chair for this one or lean against the wall. Here's the chaired version. So you're sitting towards the front edge of the chair and you're just sinking into your lower back to stretch out your lower back against the wall, feet about a half a foot away from the wall, rest your bottom and as much as your back against the wall as you can. Note that little gap that denotes the lower back. You're just squeezing your tummy muscles in to tuck your bottom under again, lengthening out down the back, closing that hole between your back and the wall. Here we go then for one minute. So the idea of this move simply is to engage the lower tummy muscles, the area that I'm pointing to, and stretching out the lower back, that bit behind you. So you're sinking your lower back either towards the back bottom of the chair or squishing down that gap between your back and the wall in the standing version. The standing version, you'll notice the knees are bending a little bit, but none of the rest of the body is being affected. Here's a lying version, my hands showing the little gap between your back and the floor. Squeeze your fingers. So tilt your pelvis backwards. You can rest your arm wherever you want to. I've just got my arm behind me so you can see that part of the body. Here it is in close up. So you're squashing down, tucking your bottom under, pressing your belly button down, squeezing the back down into the floor. And there we go. Take a rest from that one. Next is press ups. Easy version against the wall, slightly more difficult on the floor if you feel it's appropriate. So, a good couple of feet away from the wall, you want to be leaning slightly into the wall, only a fraction. Hands go lower and wider than the shoulders, and your body, as one straight line, lowers towards the wall and back again. Tummy muscles in. There's the timer started then. So notice how it's my nose, not my chest, that's going towards the wall. My back is staying straight. Tummy muscles in all the time. The heels, for me, stay on the floor. They might lift off for you. Depends how far away your feet are from the wall. You must have your hands wider than the shoulders so that the wrists are straight and true when you bend the elbow. Now here's the harder version on the floor. 
You're resting on your knees. Obviously, you can put a cushion or something underneath them. Again, hands are wider than the shoulders. So when you bend your elbows, your wrists are straight and true. And the back is straight. I'm not collapsing into my back. I'm not dropping the chest or tummy to the floor. I'm pitching my weight slightly forwards and not backwards. You can, if you want to, use a windowsill where the hands will be a little lower for the standing version to make it a little trickier. So next comes the sit to stand. I'm going to show you quite a few options here. So just take a look first. On the right here, we've got the original sit down, stand up. You're driving your heels into the floor and standing tall. On the left, there's a ball between my knees. Some people's knees do collapse inwards. So if that happens to you, do use a ball or a cushion to support your knees and thighs. Slightly harder versions, you pop a band around the just above the knees. That'll create a little bit of tension for the outer thighs or the wall squat, which I'll show in more detail at the end of the sit to stand section if you want to try that one. So here we go then for a minute, sit to stand. Basically, you stand tall, you squeeze your bottom at the top without throwing the hips forwards and you gently come back down into the seat. Now, if that's a little challenging for you, you can lift the height of the seat up by putting a cushion on that seat. You haven't got to go quite so low down. If that's still too much for you, or you need to take it easier for whatever reason, do a half a stand. So you're just using your arms, pressing into the thighs, pushing down with the feet to stand some of the way up, being mindful to control the way down. Easier still will be the leg extension. You can stay seated. Squeeze the thighs to straighten the legs. You can make that one a little bit more challenging by popping a band around your ankles. So lots of options for you to choose from there. Do use them. See which one works for you best. Nearly there then. Okay, take a little rest. I'm just going to briefly go through that wall squat that I mentioned earlier. You pop the ball behind you, rest it in your lower back, lean into the wall, step your feet forwards about a foot or so away from the wall. Make sure knees and toes are pointing forwards. You bend your knees, drop your bottom down. Keep your shoulders back and the spine nice and straight. If you look down, you should still be able to see your toes. If you can't, you must bring your feet a little further forwards. Otherwise, it's putting too much pressure through those knees. So this is an option. Obviously, this isn't as a well as you do this instead of sit to stand if you prefer. To come out of that small squat, you must step back first and then take the ball out of the way. And so on to balance then. I've got a couple of options for you. Standing on one leg, using the chair or the wall, just to make you feel safe and secure. If you wanted to make that option a little more challenging, stand on a plump cushion as it'll make you wobble a little bit more. Another option is to walk heel to toe as if you're on a tightrope. So we're going to start the timer in a moment. Here we go. So the key with balance is to look forwards, keep your shoulders back and tummy muscles in. And remember to breathe. It sounds a bit silly, but it's essential. We don't do a lot of balancing activities as we get older, and so this affects our confidence and our mobility. And so improving your balance can be key to keeping yourself active and keeping yourself strong. Those that are standing on one leg, you need to swap sides now. On the bottom video, you can now see a little add-on that I've added. As you step, you then lift your heels, come onto the balls of the feet, melt the heels back down and then step again. This slows you down and challenges that balance just that little bit more. You can also add a weight to one hand, which will pull you to one side. That makes things a little bit more challenging as well. OK, last couple of seconds then. And your balance is done. So here are some extended exercises that you might want to try once you've settled into the routine. We'll start with tabletop to begin with. So for this, you need to be on all fours on the floor. Tummy muscles tucked in, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, and your back is very straight, as I'm showing with my hand there. So core muscles in, you're going to lengthen one arm, other arm, one leg, not too far, 
and the other leg. And the aim for this move is for your back to stay like a tabletop, absolutely still. Imagine if you have a tray of drinks resting across your back, you wouldn't spill any despite moving the limbs. This is your next level up where you do right arm and left leg together and then left arm and right leg together. Notice how slowly I'm moving. That's important for you to maintain control. The worst mistake people make with this one is that they overdo it, they overreach. So keep nice and steady. Here we go, let's start the timer then for a minute. So the top one showing the easier version, one limb at a time, bottom one showing the slightly harder version. And again, notice how slowly I'm moving. Tummy muscles are tightened. The back is not sagging in the middle. My hips are not drastically shifting from one side to the other. The shoulders are not coming up towards the ears. There is another variation of this that I haven't videoed, and that's where the feet are on the floor and the hands are on the seat of a chair. But it's exactly the same. You can do one limb at a time or you can do opposite limbs at a time. That might be better for somebody who doesn't want to go to the floor, perhaps. Some your muscles tightened. Remember to keep breathing despite the concentration. And the aim is you simply keep your back as still as a tabletop. And there we go. Next then is the bridge. There's only one level to this. And unfortunately, you do need to be on the floor for this one. So if you're not comfortable with that, then miss this one out. So your feet need to be underneath your knees. Your tummy muscles are tucked in. Your pelvis needs to be in neutral. It needs to be a little gap between your back and the floor. Your hands rest on the floor. However, I'm going to put my arms across my chest so that you can see my torso okay. This is a slightly more difficult version. You're welcome to try this if it suits. You tighten your tummy muscles and tilt the pelvis backwards to the bottom lifts and then the rest of the spine, section by section, will lift off the floor until you come to a straight line virtually through thighs to ribs. Legs do not drop outwards, keep them parallel. Don't squeeze them together either. And then you're going to roll your spine back down into the floor one vertebrae at a time. You'll return to neutral at the bottom, so you'll replace that little gap between your back and the floor. Here's the timer. Let's go. Squeeze the tummy, push down a little with the feet and peel the spine up. I'd like you to think about a scorpion's tail. Visualise how a scorpion tail curls backwards and then uncurls again as it rests back down on the floor. Try and mimic this movement with your pelvis and your spine. Ideally, if you can, breathe out to tilt back and peel up. And breathe in to roll the spine back down, returning to neutral. Remember, you are supposed to be tightening the tummy muscles with this one. Try and think of the tummy muscles lifting from above rather than the legs and bottom muscles pushing up from underneath. Can take a little bit of getting used to for this one. So do take your time, close your eyes. That might help you to connect with your body's movements a little better. Last few seconds then. Okay, next move is called dead bugs. I'm gonna show you the seated version to start with and that's what I'll time you with. So you're gonna sit squarely in the chair, not too far back, stay forward on the chair and plant your feet down into the floor for me. Settle the shoulders, tighten the tummy muscles in. I want you to imagine your pelvis is a bucket of water. So we're gently gonna take one foot at a time off the floor. But as you do so, keep the pelvis still. This is how you should not do the move. See how much movement there is in the body and the pelvis. We do not want to see this. So keep it slow and very concentrated, floating and lowering each foot one at a time. Slightly more difficult version, you can add the arms, the one on the right here. It's opposite arm to leg, the same as a tabletop. So as the left leg lifts, the right arm lifts at the same time. Here we go with the timer then for a minute. So obviously you're welcome to stay with the lower level, just working on the feet. You can hold your hips gently with your fingertips and thumbs. That'll help you to sense as to whether your pelvis is moving as you move those legs. 
If you're doing the version with the arms, just make sure that the chest isn't popping forwards each time you lift the arms and do keep those shoulders well away from the ears. Again, as with all moves, remember to breathe, keep the tummy muscles zipped up. Here's a slightly more extended version. You can see at the bottom right there, I'm extending the leg each time I lift. This adds on a little bit more movement and weight to the move. So you're welcome to try that once you've gotten used to the basic levels. Okay, finishing that one off then, I'm going to show you the floor dead bugs, which some of you might be happy to try. So you're going to lay down with your head on a cushion, feet are hip distance apart, there's a right angle at your knee. Make sure your feet are in line with your hips. Now your pelvis needs to sink back, so tuck your hand underneath your back and then tilt backwards, squash down with your tummy muscles to squeeze your fingers. Take your fingers out and keep that pressure pressing down onto your back all of the time. So your back is flush to the floor. Fingertips are going to go on top of your hip bones to help guide for this one. As you breathe out, you're going to float one foot off the floor, bring the knee to above the hip, and then breathe in to place the foot back down on the floor. Take it nice and slow. And as you swap from one foot to the other, that back stays flush to the floor, but also underneath your fingertips, your pelvis shouldn't shift from side to side. Keep everything stable, keep breathing. Again, keep the movement smooth, smooth and slow to help the concentration. Next level, we're gonna lift the leg, then stretch it out, making sure our back and tummy are nice and flat. Do this for about three or four times, straightening the leg. The lower you take that leg, the harder it's going to be for your tummy muscles to keep the back squashed into the floor. Three or four on one leg, three or four on the other leg. Notice how the knee does not come back above the tummy. It must stop above the hip. So I'm just showing that same level again, going three or four, on each leg, but notice how nothing else moves. The back stays flat to the floor, tummy muscles stay switched on and nice and flat. Remember to breathe. There's another few more levels to this move, which I'm going to show you, but only try them if you're able to keep your back completely flat to the floor. So taking one leg up, we're going to lengthen one leg and two arms go backwards. Notice how the tummy muscles and the rib cage stays flat and down. Your back is still squished into the floor at this point. Breathe in to bring the arms and leg back, and then you keep stretching them three or four times as we did earlier, before you'll then swap the legs over and do the same on the other side. Squash your tummy muscles down, squash that back down. There's no gap underneath my back, even though I'm stretched full. That'll keep that core working and keep it nice and strong. Another level for you now. This is much more difficult, so please beware. Maintaining that flat back, you're going to take one, then the other foot off the floor. If your body jolts and bounces at this point, then please put both feet back down on the floor, stick to one leg. But you'll see with both legs in the air, you're alternating which leg you move. The arms go back as before, but still, tummy muscles are flat, and back is completely flush and glued to the floor. This is a much, much harder version sending two legs and two arms away at the same time. Only do the two legs if you're 100% confident and very secure with the one leg version. And always hug into the chest to relax the back after that one. Now I'm going to show you how to do some upper body work with a resistance band just to mix the program up a little bit. It's always good to strengthen the arms as well. So sitting forwards on the chair, tummy muscles in, hold the band in front of you and you're just going to pull back like a bow and arrow. All right, so we're just warming up here. I'm going to set 30 seconds on the timer here instead of a minute. Here we go with 30 seconds then. So body stays still. 
Pull that elbow right back behind you. Keep the other arm straight out in front. Tummy muscles switched on, feet planted into the floor. There's a variety of directions you can send the arms. This is pulling back. You can twist the upper body a little with this one if you want to, get some rotation through the waist. There we go, that's your time up on this one. The next one we're going to press up. Take a little look, keeping one arm locked down to the ribs whilst you press the other one up. If you've got high blood pressure, take care with this one. Here we go with the timer. So yeah, if you've got high blood pressure and you find that this one makes you go a little bit giddy, then it might be suitable just to either crunch the arms in front a little bit more, or maybe not do this one in your routine at all. As before, feet planted into the floor, tummy muscles in, eyes looking forwards. Notice how the body isn't rocking from side to side to press upwards. There we go. And that's your 30 seconds. So the next one, we're going to work the back of the arms and the shoulders by pressing out to the side. Here we go with the timer then, 30 seconds on this one as well. Once again, sat square into the chair, sitting forward slightly, so you're using your torso to support yourself upright rather than the back of the chair. Feet squared off to the floor. Only the arms are moving. Okay then, we're gonna do individual arms now with a bicep curl. Notice how one hand is anchoring the band down onto my thigh, the other hand pulling thumb to shoulder. Here we go, 15 seconds on this side then. So it's just that left arm of mine that's working, bringing thumb to shoulder, keeping the elbow pointing down, nothing else is moving. That's nearly 15 seconds on this side. We need to swap sides. Now, I was a bit silly when I was doing my recording. I didn't video myself doing the other arm. You need to swap arms, but you'll see in this video that I'm still doing the same arm. So apologies for that. So anchor the band down onto one thigh, pull thumb to shoulder with the opposite arm. This is working the biceps and the biceps alone. There we go, it's your 15 seconds for that one. The next one works the triceps, the back of the arm. So you're going to attach the band with your hand to one shoulder. The other hand is going to press down like so and straighten the arm. So you're going from a bent arm to a straight arm. Here we go, 15 seconds on this side. Obviously, if you find these 15 seconds aren't long enough, you're welcome to do longer. Three more seconds on this side then. And we'll swap sides. Once again, I didn't video myself doing the other side, but you do need to do the other side. So the video will show me doing the same side, but you need to use the opposite side. So hand anchors the band to the shoulder, other elbow tucked into the waist, and you press that hand down to work the triceps, the back of the arm. Really important to keep that upper body strong as well as the lower body. That's why it's quite good just to add these extra exercises in. Super, well done. And so on to the cool down then. We're just going to start with a very light march, just to keep the blood flowing a little bit. Keep those joints and muscles loose. You can shake your legs out like I'm doing here if you want to, especially if they ache a little but otherwise just a very light march. Okay, now we'll do some toe taps. We'll hold, hold those toe taps just a wee bit longer than we did with the warm up, with the aim of stretching out the muscles down the front of the shin. Obviously you can use a chair or the wall to lean on if you feel you need to. Then we're going to do those heel digs. Again, we'll hold that heel dig and stretch just a wee bit longer than earlier. You can let your body tip forwards a fraction, bending the other knee if that's suitable. Again, using a chair for support if necessary. 
There we go, that should help the legs to recover a little bit. On the waist, we're just going to swing the upper body around, use the arms for a little bit of momentum, winding out through the waist, releasing through the lower back. And just helping the body settle down after the exercise. And then arms down by your sides. We're going to drop fingers towards the knee on each side. Remember, we're keeping our hips still in the center, keeping our feet flat to the floor. Just go over as far as you can feel a bit of a stretch in the opposite side. Now, it's quite common for the back to ache a little after some exercise. So we're going to do what's called the slump. This is a really nice stretch for the lower back. Put you to stand with your feet, hip distance apart, tummy muscles in, and just collapse the upper body forward. Start with the arms and shoulders and head, and then just slowly fold yourself over. Nice, loose arms, hanging upside down, stretching through the lower back, where I'm showing here, tucking up with the tummy muscles all the time, scooping up as if you were bending over some kind of fence. If standing is too much for you, here's your seated variety. So same thing, take those feet a little further forward than you would normally have, slide the hands down the legs, tuck the chin in, tuck the tummy in, nice long stretch through the spine. When you come up, do keep the tummy muscles engaged, slowly rebuild all the way up to the top, keeping those shoulders relaxed, and then you're ready to go down once again. Do remember to breathe through this stretch. It might be at first that your mind is a little apprehensive about this kind of move, especially if you're standing. So try not to hold your breath. Remember to breathe, that helps to calm the mind and engage the core muscles. There we go. Do as many of those as you feel is suitable for you. And then with the shoulders, we'll roll those shoulders backwards and forwards a few times just to loosen out and release any tension around the neck area. And then we'll turn the head from side to side just to loosen out through that area too. Remember the warm up and the cool down are just as important as the main part of the exercise to prepare the body and then to wind down afterwards. You can tip the head forwards and back as well if that suits with this last little bit. And we'll finish off with a couple of big breaths. Sweep those arms up, nice big breath in and breathe out as you drop the arms down. We'll do one more, just the same. Well done. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.